Good morning, everybody. I hope you had a great weekend. It was really, really nice here in Wichita. We made um, 70 degrees one day, and I think today we're 63 or 64. So very, very enjoyable. And because it is seasonally warmer uh, than it should be, uh, um, we didn't have any winds to go with it, which is uh, pretty nice, too. So great weekend. Uh, looking forward to more warm weather. It is March when uh, Red shares some of that Canadian air with us. I'm sure uh, things will cool down in a hurry. Okay, it is Monday morning, and there's no news to drive the trading. There was no news out of Europe. The, probably the biggest news out of uh, Europe, and I don't know which side is releasing this information, is that uh, Greece is looking at bankruptcy, and I don't want to go well duh. So I don't know if it's Greece trying to enhance their bargaining power. Uh, um, with the EU or not. Uh, today, the, um, the European Central Bank is supposed to purchase German and Italian paper, and we're supposed to get the details of what their purchase program is going to be like today, <clears throat> what type of paper will be taken in. So we have an attractor here at 12. We've got this last rotate up at 10 and a half on B period, and then we're at 15 right here. So the issue is, 8 to 12 resistance, or is 12 to 16. So uh, the best trades leaning up against this high volume number at 11 to uh, as high as 12. That's a trade that will give us the most time to work. <clears throat> resistance is at 8. So the first sell is 7 to 11. Would like to get it done at 11 or better. Second sell is 15 to 19. Uh, usually we get a pause day after a trend day. And that's what we'll be playing for. It looks like there's pretty good support down at the buck, so 1 to 29 will be buy 1. And if we make new lows, I don't think the market is going to break because of this week's auction. This is the 3, 10, and 30-year auction. And it generally finds buyers. Uh, so we'll play for that. Given the lack of news, um, my guess is we're going to have a pretty quiet day. <clears throat> Interesting comments out of uh, Germany. I forget which uh, German official said it, but it, that it's time for Europe to build a European Union army. Now, imagine <laughs> what it would take to get a European Union army to go to war. And this is to... Um, build credibility that Europe can defend themselves. And this is a problem. We, we talk about it on a regular basis. You've got a, uh, a very, very wealthy uh, group of nations uh, cobbled together, uh, no spending money. They don't spend money on defense to speak of, and uh, it's a prize that a lot of people would like to get their hands on. And they don't have, a, they don't have the ability to defend themselves. And it's going to be hard for them to pay for it, given their social um, welfare uh, systems that they put into place in those countries, and these people riot when they don't get their monthly paycheck or they, there's talk about it um, being cut. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Okay, right here, I, it, one of the things that you should pay attention to when you're looking for a um, methodology or approach or to uh, put into use to trade the markets is is it consistent across all time frames? And you can see right here we've got volume, which acts as an attractor. And you can see that X made it up to this volume number. And if you want the safest place to have a resting limit buy or sell is against these high volume numbers because if they're not immediately rejected and about only about 25% of the time are they immediately rejected, then you'll trade around them. So you're looking at usually a scratch. Uh, pretty difficult to take them out without news. So uh, just wanted to mark that down for you so you'd pay attention. So 5607 to 11, sell 1. And then 15s to 19s, we'll pick up this area right up in here, these single prints for sell 2. On the buy side, we've got volume at 28. Last rotate down stopped at 24. Uh, we're at 03, so 25, 29, buy one. 
and 1721 by 2. And my idea is that we've got a range trade today, that uh, they won't be able to take it a heck of a lot higher. Um, but they usually do try to get higher on a day like this. They're going to look for where resistance really is. And they don't know that without probing. There's a lot of articles out over the weekend about the composition of uh, the jobs numbers, where they came from, uh, et cetera. And I, I'm a, I'll post a couple of them uh, intraday, just as background. And again, the numbers are cooked. They're fake. Uh, the way that they arrive at their statistical smoothing um, and people dropping out of the job force for the unemployment number. and um, one of the articles over the weekend says, you know, we've arrived, we've created more bartender and waitress jobs than I forget what the other one, I think it was manufacturing. And um, those are not the high paying jobs, the jobs that, you know, give people medical and retirement, et cetera. Those are, you know, kind of hand to mouth jobs. So uh, we still have problems in the economy. Okay, gold, 75 is a market number. And right here, so the sub five area plus or minus is going to be cell one. Then it backs up to this area up here. So 79 and 81 will be cell two. On the high side, uh, we have buying uh, in that 65, 67. So we'll play for that. And then 60, 62. Best support is in the uh, 55 to 60 area. And uh, <clears throat> I don't think we'll go there today, but that would be worth a shot from the long side, in my opinion. Okay, so we have a trend day down, and what we're doing, it's retracing a little bit. They're looking where resistance might be, and we've got, again, here's your high volume number, and I just want to point out that theory. Uh, high volume numbers are attractors. It's our rule number two in our 3-2-1 trading methodology. A resting limit sell. It's a high volume number. Uh, gives you some wiggle room, some time to work it if there's not news. And about 25% of their immediately rejected, and the other time you trade around an hour, hour and a half. So again, pay attention to these high volume numbers. It is the safest spot for a resting limit order. And again, the theory should work all time frames across all markets. So this is the gold market. And it still, it does just like the one we just showed you. So this stuff works. I mean, the, the theory is consistent. I. Uh, There it is. OK, we had a trend day down on Friday uh, in the euro. Uh, a lot of things operating right now. Uh, how much will it cost um, for the Greek bailout? Uh, over the weekend, uh, from the southern part of Austria, there was a, uh, a bank that required, oh gosh, I think $8.5 billion worth of injection of liquidity last week uh, was back in the news. Uh, so it's not just the pig nations that have problems. It's um, other banks um, in the European Union do too. So right here, the low volume area on that spill is right up here in the 1920, 1930 area. And they did get stops above A right here, but it didn't carry up very high. And you can see at the low volume number, which is our number one rule, uh, did hold as resistant. So the safe spot for uh, another spot to have, not necessarily safe, but another low risk place to have uh, resting limit order. And the best one, especially and go with uh, in responsive markets like the bond and the note, is against these low volume numbers. It works and go with markets too. So the low volume number at uh, 1.0908 right here held as resistance. And so the neat thing about low volume numbers, you're immediately right, immediately wrong. You don't have to waste any emotional capital. And the bad thing about high 
volume numbers is, is that there can be quite a lot of emotional capital expended uh, while you're waiting to see if that number is going to hold or you're just going to trade around it or you're going to go through it. So the low volume numbers are really nice. Um, and what you'll find is, is that if a low volume number holds, you'll go back to the high volume number. And you can see right here that um, the T number makes it to that high volume number. The S right here makes it to this high volume number and so on and so forth. So if low volume numbers hold, they get back to the high volume numbers. So oh, here we are at 63. The last rotate up was 80, uh, then to 94. So we'll have a uh, 75, 85, very, very aggressive. Sell one, then um, we'll do uh, 109 plus or minus for sell two. Uh, again, we like the short side of the uh, euro market. I think it's uh, good for a run down to par or parity with a dime. Uh, last rotate down was uh, 48, so 40 to 50 by 1. The idea that we'll have a pause day today and then 20 to 30 by 2. <clears throat> 75 to 85 is pretty aggressive. The 109 is not. 40 to 50 is a play for them to get stops below 50. Don't go well, duh. the way it works. But again, we're going to point out these, um, the three. I try to reinforce that idea with you as much as we can over time. Okay, crude oil, um, lots of articles out over the weekend about crude has started to sell again, this time to 30 bucks. And I mean, who knows where it's going to go. Uh, but if they run out of above ground storage in the United States and they can't export this and it's getting harder to export it because everybody has the same problem, maybe Venezuela will be a buyer, huh? Uh, uh, then uh, they're going to have to start shutting in production in the United States and that's ultimately what's needed to cure this problem. I've been through four oil busts in my life. Uh, it takes a year and a half to two years for oil prices to start going the other way without war. And it just, you, you work off the uh, oversupply, you work off the overproduction. Uh, that part of the um, economic sector of an economy uh, bottoms. Uh, then it starts to come back. And that's the way it works. So right now, our 49, 49 and a quarter looks reasonable for buy one. 48.50 to 75 for buy two. So basically 48.50 to 49 and a quarter should be pretty good support. And resistance last rotate up was uh, 99. We've got a higher at 89. So 49.75, it's pretty aggressive. Leaning against 50 is where we'd like to do it. Then 25 to 50 for sell two. And to everybody's favorite contract. When many can actually sell, this contract is everything that's advertised. If you can get a daily range over 15 points, anything works in the e-mini. It just uh, moving average crossover, CCI, RSI, everything works. And uh, what you'll find on your moving average crossovers is that you're probably giving up uh, three to four handles off either edge. When the E-mini trades 10 points or less, it's pretty difficult to make everything work. Uh, so we had a good day. Uh, we did sell. The idea was the Fed would be raising interest rates in June, and that's, that's the Wall Street Journal's take. It's Goldman's take right now that an interest rate bump is coming in June. Uh, I have heard one story that does make sense, uh, that uh, the United States will raise interest rates, let the European uh, quantitative easing, which is supposed to raise stock markets in Europe by 30%, just because it is quantitative easing. Uh, we'll see. 
but once the um, European Union quantitative easing, as Japan's has and the United States have run their course, then the United States, if they raise interest rates, can lower theirs again uh, to backstop the system. Now, that, one, that makes some sense to me, especially if you're of a conspiracy bent. But that's one scenario that would make sense. So here we have this bill from 85, 87. Last rotate up was in the 81 area. We're at 71.50, so stops above 75 for sell 74.76, and then 79.81 for sell two. I don't think we can break the market, so 65, 67 by one. Although I do think there is a short in it, and then our 60 to 62 best supports in that 57 to 60 area, just off the charts and structure. And we do have this high volume number at 63 right Your there. Your body goes through more than 500 ups and downs a day. That's um, Your deodorant should keep The uh, 75 sells pretty aggressive. The 65 buys pretty aggressive, but we usually get a pause day. No news today. Probably the best economic news out overnight was that Chinese exports had rebounded from contraction in January uh, to uh, expansion in February. They had a big big jump in exports. Uh, their imports on a yuan basis or dollar basis were lower, but they did buy a lot of iron and a lot of crude oil because of the lower prices. So uh, China is where people look to for um, support for the commodity markets. OK, it'll take about 20 minutes to get everything up and running. I'm going to get busy on that. I will be with you as soon as I can, and good trading in the interim. Later.